There's no way. Uh, I've given it some thought and I think best course of action probably is to swap crankshafts. I priced out new crankshafts because this one does have that little bit of scoring. Um, I'm gonna polish that out, but really it just doesn't make sense. Cost-wise, time-wise, I've already had to order a gasket set now because uh, I'm gonna have to obviously take apart that other engine to get that crankshaft out and get this one in. So this is where we're at. Clock is ticking. have our not so lovely crankshaft complete with scoring gonna do minimum disassembly on this thing partly because why would we do more and partly because I gotta leave for work soon <laughs> Come on, you. When I took apart the other engine, the locking tabs weren't bent over, and you can see them there. That's how they're supposed to look, bent over so these bolts can't back out. On the other one, they were unbent.
That looks a lot nicer than the other one. Whoopsie. Tell I'm in a hurry because I'm just making a big old mess in here. And there we are. Crankshaft number two. Whoa, that wouldn't do it all. That's it. I gotta go to work. Before I forget how all of this goes back together, I'm gonna keep cracking. Uh, back from work now, but I want to uh, just buff this up a little bit. Obviously, we're not going to, we're not aiming to make these grooves disappear because then we're clearly taking off too much, but we don't want any raised areas either. So I'm just going to smooth it out using a trick I learned decades ago uh, when I was first an apprentice. And I actually learned this trick from my dad, so um, it's a good one. You might know it, you might not. I use it all the time. So we're just going to get it in a vise here. Don't have to go too crazy with it, protect it with a rag so we don't score anything. And somewhere I should have, yeah, just a little bit of emery cloth. This is 180 grit, which is maybe a bit aggressive, but it's what I have. And uh, it's also a bit wide. I'm gonna cut it down narrower. Ready bits. Okay. And we're also going to want some clean oil out of there. There's not a lot of clean oil. Most of it's dirty, but there's a bit of clean oil there. Just a bit. And a bit of rope. can use extra electrical wire, whatever you want. I'm going to wrap this around here as tight as we can get it. And we're going to give this maybe two loops around. That's it. We'll just go back and forth. And the rope provides some tension on it and makes it easy to move back and forth. We'll try and focus our attention on this rough end. Doesn't take much and we don't want to do much because Say we don't want to end up with a loose rod end. That's so much better. It's still got grooves, but we can probably live with it. The rest of this is actually in really good shape. I noticed that this base, this is from the Gilson engine originally, it is slightly different than the base that was on this rototiller. They're interchangeable, so I'm going to use the original Alice Chalmers base with the snowblower block. But uh, I can't go a lot farther. I can go a little farther, but not a lot farther until I have my gasket set, which is coming tomorrow today but I can do a little
connected the connecting rod to the crankshaft and just doing up the bolts. I don't know what the torque spec is on that, so I'm not going to do up the tabs yet. I'm going to wait till I've got it torqued. In truth, pull it off a bit. I should have put a bit of oil in there before I started. We'll just drizzle some in there now. There. That'll be better. I was right. It isn't much. It's a whole 100 inch pounds. Feels all right. Feels just like it did before. And just fold these tabs over. shaft here and then we'll put our camshaft back in So, oil slinger, that's about as much as we can do until we have a gasket. Well, it's a new day. Uh, got the, this is the Alice Chalmers base plate. Um, so it's original to the rototiller cleaned up. Uh, the only real difference is just the, the location of the drain. So in this case, it's actually uh, towards the like the back of the engine, uh, or sorry, the front, I believe. Where is it at here? It's at the front of the engine on the snowblower. It's on the side. So does that really make a difference? Probably not, but we're going to use the original one because we have it and that just makes better sense. I did get my gasket set. So uh, where's something I can open this with? That's what I'm looking for. There's all kinds of Briggs flathead or L head gaskets in here. So these will definitely come in handy on all of these projects. The thing is, there are three. So I'm not replacing every gasket on this thing. That would just be silly. There are three sump as they call it, cover gaskets in here. And the reason for that is because that's how we set our crankshaft end play to spec. Which one of these is gonna be correct? I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the, uh, the middlest one as long as we end up in spec, you know, good enough, right? We'll drizzle a little oil here and there just to uh, ease things along. There we go.
have an idea for checking that. End play specs are between two and 30 thou. And uh, with 30 thou here, we're, we're over. So, okay. Horizontal shaft engines, you can get away with more uh, end plates. So, yeah. All right, I'm, you know what? I'm not even gonna measure that. It's better and uh, I don't have any other options. So we're gonna go with it. Why waste time measuring it? And the spec on these is 89 inch pounds. And now we can get to the meat and potatoes of why we went through all of this in the first place. The pulley. Okay. Well, hasn't this all just been very entertaining? <laughs> it's been interesting, and I hope you enjoy it too, but I'll be glad when this little project is done. I, I don't know why I took on all of this. Hmm. Where's that key? I'd have to go fishing. Got lucky. Do.
There. Now, what did I say I couldn't forget to do? Just to make sure we've done everything okay. All right. That feels good. Right on. A successful road trip to Vegarville, home of the world's largest Pasanka egg. I didn't get any pictures of it because I went there for this. It's about an hour away. So from one gentleman, I picked up this Kohler. It's a K91. Um, it was built for a company called Fox Body Equipment, which has nothing to do with Mustangs. Um, I can't remember what year, I think it's 60s. Uh, and then from another gentleman, I purchased this, which is a 75, three horsepower, uh, you know, horizontal shaft. And then he was kind enough to not only subscribe to the channel, but he also hooked me up with this. 1986 horizontal shaft. Um, it's actually got a pretty nice clean tank. I suspect I may just use it more for parts. And then also, again, more for parts, but this is a 1964 uh, vertical shaft, but it's got the, if I can get it to come open with one hand, I don't think I can. It's got the, uh, crank starter so that's pretty cool um and then i'm not even sure what this guy does i can't remember i'll have to look it up but um you know it it looks like it's been outside the crankcase is full of water and whatever but uh yeah it might not run but man it's gonna be really cool for parts can probably put this on something maybe on uh on the Gilson, that'd be interesting. So, get these unloaded and then uh, kids will be home from school soon. So that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of that for, for now.